I want to talk a little bit about forage species for extended grazing seasons, and, and we can kind of group them broadly into two classes of grasses, warm and cool seasons. Our cool season grasses are going to have optimal growth or optimum photosynthesis in the leaf blade of the, of the grass at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. When we start to increase above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, um, the efficiency of cool season grasses decrease. They tend to be more digestible and higher in crude protein, and they tend to have a lower total, a longer total growing season in this part of the country. Our warm season grasses don't reach optimal photosynthesis until 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so um, they're going to grow during the summer months when our cool season grass growth is limited by high temperatures. They tend to be a little bit less digestible and lower in crude protein. They're more efficient at using nitrogen. But they tend to be a lot more drought tolerant in grazing systems. And they're much more efficient at using water. And that's important for both irrigated and non-irrigated systems. Warm season grasses will, on average, produce about twice as much dry matter per unit of water used compared to a cool season grass during the summer months. So you're going to get a lot more growth per unit of water used during the summer months. And that's important in both rain-fed and irrigated systems, especially irrigated systems, because you want to get the most growth out of your uh, warm season grasses. Uh, Dr. Escobar? So it's not as productive um, without going into the photosynthesis or, or the, the photosynthetic efficiency decreases as we get over 70 degrees Fahrenheit in our cool season grasses. So it becomes less efficient. It's still carrying out photosynthesis, but it's not fixing as much carbon, so it doesn't have as much growth in the summer months. So growth in our cool season grasses are really limited during the summer months. They're still growing some, but not as efficiently. Yes? Yeah, and I don't know, are you going to talk about that less in your presentation? So Les will talk a little bit, but generally speaking, when we talk about designing a soil fertility program, which is another lecture all in itself, um, the first thing that I always tell people to adjust is soil pH, because when we adjust soil pH, we make all the other nutrients in the soil more available to the plant. And what we generally add is a lime to the soil to adjust soil pH. So that's really, really the, the place to start is to get a soil test and then look at, um, at your pH and get your pH adjusted first and then add the other nutrients that you need um, to have optimal pasture production. All right. So this is just a nice example of the temporal nature of a cool and warm season grass. This was taken in March. Um, in the south side of Virginia, and, and this is tall fescue up and growing. This is Bermuda grass. It looks dead, but it's not dead. It's just dormant, and it it's, hasn't initiated growth yet. It's not going to initiate growth until we get into um, late April and, and May, and then as we get into June, it will really be hitting high gear, as this one is starting to slow down because the temperatures are getting higher as we get into June and July. And back here in the corner is just a little piece of alfalfa, which is a cool season legume and it's up and growing in March. So this is kind of the, uh, the growth curve that we'll see in this part of the country. We, this is tall fescue and ladino clover. We get a hump of growth in the spring, hump of growth in the fall, it's a cool season grass, and then not much growth during the summer months, and that's when that, that photosynthesis is limited by high temperatures, or that growth of that cool season grass is limited by high temperatures. A summer annual grass or a summer perennial grass is going to have all of its growth tucked into the summer months, um, June, July, August, and then it starts to slow down as we get into September again. So you can see on this graph how these two grasses would complement each other in a grazing system. We're going to talk about how to fit them 